So I'm going to turn it over to you, Nicole, um, and we're going to talk about a very, this is, this is a really serious topic, but something that every student can help us with is what to do about the plastic problem. They call it the plastic plague, actually. That is a real problem in our oceans and in our communities with water. So let's turn it over to Nicole. And um, again, what she'll do is she'll give us a little information, then we'll take some questions, and then we'll learn about our action plan. So over to you, Nicole. Thank you very much, Mary. Um, welcome, everyone. I saw a lot of familiar faces, but we have also have new friends here. So my name is Nicole. I'm from Vancouver, Korea, as well as Ocean-Wise Conservation Association. So right now I'm here at a Vancouver Aquarium. Behind me is uh, our sea jellyfish as well as our sea nettles here. So they're actually very nice to have here uh, as the background. So feel free to take a look at it. And I'm really happy to share my knowledge and experience here uh, at the traditional land of the Coast Salish people, including the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh so nations. So yeah, today we're going to talk about a very serious problem happening everywhere in the earth, and that's the plastic problem. So plastic is everywhere in our ocean, as well as in our daily life. So before the start of the topics, I would like you to type in and try to search for the plastic items that you have around you uh, at your home or at um, the space that you're actually having now. Try to type plastic item that you have. Laptops has plastics, plastic bags, water bottles, your Kindle, plastic bags, water bottles. Oh, that's a lot. And when you try to take a look at your whole body, you might have plastic on you as well. So take me as an example, my glass actually have plastic on it. And then for my clothes, there might be some plastic materials that inside object cap too. And for my shoes, uh, even though you cannot look at it, but um, they are actually made of plastics too. So not only plastic bags or single use uh, items, but also from clothes, from glass, or even shoes, or wrappers, watch, rubber band, they're all plastic. So plastic are actually becoming popular in the uh, 40 to 15 uh, uh, in the centuries. And they become very popular because they're light, lightweight, they are easy to manufacture, easy to produce, and also they are actually very cheap. So a lot of manufacturer and well as businessmen, they try to replace those heavy, expensive materials with plastics and that, that's why you can see there's a lot of different items that appears in um, your community like your home or even supermarkets or even elsewhere uh, in the earth yeah so very nice of all of you that you type a lot of plastic items but those items are actually um, they are really really dangerous to our ocean uh, especially for mammals because we often receive a lot of reports of uh, sea lions or seals, they're having plastic wrapping around the neck. So I'm going to show you some of the picture. Can I have the share content again? Let me check. Katie and Millie, can I have the share button? Katie has the share button. <laughs> Sharing is caring, Katie. Thank you. I learned that from John Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. So here we have a picture of our sea lions here in the BC coast. Uh, we have a dedicated team called the Marine Mammal Rescue Team. They often receive calls from citizens around um, BC that they saw uh, sightings like this. So there's wraps, like plastic linings, uh, wrapping around sea lions. Uh, neck. So what do those uh, sea lions, uh, what do our team do is actually they try to get uh, closer to the sea lions or the individuals and they try to cut the plastic 
uh, away and try to remove it uh, carefully from the individual in order to let them be safe again in the ocean. And this is something that we usually have uh, daily as well as uh, we, we usually have 200 or more cases are re being reported by citizens. So this is something that we should really pop, uh, probably take, uh, take a look at it. And I want to show you an other picture as well that is happening around the world. Um, some of them uh, may be related to all of us as well. So I'm going to show it to you. So this is not a picture that a shark is being entangled by fishing net. So because we have demand for having more fish in our meals, so that's why there's a lot of um, fishermen that are trying to use extensive and large piece of fishing nets in order to catch more fish to uh, satisfy our needs. So here you have, we have a very large piece of fishing nets here. And the sharks are being accidentally caught by those fishing nets. And that's what we call the bycatch. So the fishermen actually try to drag everything from coral reefs to fish um, in one go in order to get as many seafood as they can. And by that process, sharks are being caught, sea turtles are being caught, and we're trying to find those ghost nets and try to remove them. But they're way too many and they are too large. And use a lot of manpower. So it's kind of um, sad news for us that we continuously seeing um, those uh, sad news in our daily life. And something that is more related to us is that apart from a larger and larger pieces of plastic like fishing nets or even um, fishing gear, or plastic bags or pl plastic bottles, we have something really, really dangerous in our daily life as well. And those large pieces of plastic, they actually break down into smaller and smaller and smaller pieces that we call microplastics. So here I have a uh, sample with me. And can, let me try to hold it for a second. And you will see there is white spot on the glass. But try to take a look at the white spot. So there's some here. And those are actually microplastics. So let me give you five more minutes to take a look at those plastics here. So this is a water sample that is collected from our uh, by our scientists in the coastal area. And within these are millions of microplastics. So these microplastics are actually coming from the largest pieces of plastics that we usually use in daily life, as well as the daily product that we are using that contains those microplastics. Why do we have microplastics in our product is that some manufacturer found it it is very easy to uh, produce and it's cheaper than, than the Can natural stop And uh, we do have a lot of microplastics in toothpaste and body scrub, as well as shampoo and body wash as well. So these tiny microplastics are so small that can follow the water current and reach the drains as well as the river. And unfortunately for the advanced technology we have, we do not have the ability to filter them off from um, the water inside our wastewater treatment plant. And that's why those microplastics enter the sea, enter the ocean very easily. So I'm going to show you some pictures about the microplastic and let's have some uh, have discussion about that. Excuse me. So somebody has, somebody has their microphone on and we think it's some um, people that are, might be on iPads. If you can just close, uh, mute your mics, please. 
So here I, I just have, have a phone call to Tanisha to try and troubleshoot this too. So here I have another picture here. So you can see there's large plastics that is transparent. They can break into smaller and smaller pieces. Uh, if you take a look at your fingernails, the microplastic is actually smaller than your fingernails, much more smaller. And even when you use your pencil to make a dot on a paper, um, the dot is having a size of similar to uh, a piece of microplastics as well. It's smaller than five millimeters. And um, if you take a look at those types of microplastics, we have myrtles. That means there are actually some uh, first-hand materials that will be made into some larger piece of plastics. They are raw materials. And we have microbeads that is happening to be in our uh, products uh, in our daily life. And then we also have synthetic fibers where it is shredded off from our clothing while we are using washing machine. And of course we have fragments from um, largest piece of plastics that can cause a very uh, serious problem to the ocean because they will wash into the uh, into the drain and eventually to the ocean as well. So what are we going to, uh, for our program? Uh, we have a lot of we have a lot of things to really take a look into. And for OceanWise, we do have a dedicated team here in order to investigate uh, how plastic affects our life. So for one of our team uh, based here in British Columbia, we're trying to place a lot of muscles into different areas of the ocean here and try to take a look at the stomach of those muscles in order to see uh, what kind of microplastics and what is the concentration uh, do they have. So I'm going to show you another piece of uh, video and explain how, uh, why do we use muscles is, uh, as an uh, indicator of those uh, plastics problem. So bear with me for a moment. Here we have a photo uh, with a, a video, and then this is um, the filter feeding um, structure on the muscles. And you can see so tiny transparent uh, uh, living things are plantains. And usually for muscles, they are filter eater. So what they do is they try to trap all those plantains and try to intake them as food for nutrients and energy. But for now, for muscles, because the microplastic is so small, the filter feeder actually intake a lot of microplastics. So if you take a look at this video, on your right hand side, you will see tiny white dots, and those are microplastics. So for our scientists, because they know Muscles cannot move, cannot move very quickly, and they eat a lot of micro, tiny microorganisms. So they try to use muscles and place it around the coastal area as well as some deep sea area, and try to learn about the content as well as the concentration of microplastic in that certain water uh, region. And they found out that actually plastics, especially for microplastics, they're everywhere. Uh, in our ocean. And that is a very important finding for us because we need to know about um, the concentration, the distribution, and try to think the solution from source. And for another uh, uh, investigation that we are trying to do is to work with indigenous people up north in the Arctic. So we try to ask um, some hunters up north to donate some of the belugas part for us, including intestine. So we try to cut the intestine open and try to take a look what plastic are in it. So let me try to see if I can pull, uh, pull up a picture to let you have a look. Okay. And just a little warning, guys. It's it's a little bit a little bit gross. <laughs> you should look away. 
Yeah, I try to. Yeah, uh, I try to uh, find a picture that is less gross <laughs> here. Um, yeah, here we go. So this is our scientist, and she is uh, trying to get the intestine ready, and it, they try to cut it open, and they will find a lot of plastic inside. Uh, no matter it's soft plastic or hot plastic, no matter it is big or small, they found a lot of plastic in it. So they try to investigate seven beluga whales, but end up they found all um, they found plastic in all of the samples. Yeah. So these are the, um, the scientific research that our team is actually focusing on and try to know more about the plastic. And also for our um, plastic lab here in Vancouver, they are trying to analyze the water sample by using a lot of high technology and try to see if uh, the, the microfiber that shred, uh, shredded from our clothing actually affects life as well. So they found out that they, there are actually a lot of microfibers being washed into the ocean uh, because of the washing machine. And they're trying to work with a lot of um, manufacturer in order to improve or try to replace those uh, uh, plastic materials with something that is more natural. So here we have a lot of different kind of scientific research as well as um, some uh, investigation in order to know more about plastics. And uh, microplastic is a very big issue, large problem as a uh, large plastic as well. And if you take a look at the background, we have a lot of sea nestle and they usually they are plantain as well. And they usually consume a lot of plantain as well as accidentally they consume a lot of microplastic in the wild. And some of the sea uh the jellyfish species are more transparent than these kind of sea nettles. And um they're actually looks like plastic bags. So sea turtles who feed on plastic bag, uh, who feed on those jellyfish, mistake those plastic bags as food. And so will choke their, in, uh, their digestive system and they will die eventually. So we need to find a solution for that. So before we jump to the solution about plastic problem, do we have time for a Q&A here? Sure do, and we can tell that you love this topic and you're very passionate about it. Um, boys and girls, do you have any questions about um, ocean plastics or where you can learn more? Okay, Tristan would like to know what is the most dangerous plastic for um, animals? Okay, so this is um, an open-ended question. So for myself, I do think microplastic is some dangerous plastic that we have, not only because they are everywhere, but they actually do not disappear very easily. Uh, even though some scientists or some study may say that it will remain here for at least 4,000 years, but um, uh, we are sure that actually they won't disappear uh, until a very long time, and they will just break it even smaller and smaller and smaller. So those tiny bits of plastic actually choke um, plantains as well as fish, and eventually they will affect the whole ecosystem, and eventually it will affect our life as well. Because uh, if you take a look at some news reports, you will see that scientists actually are analyzing our species as well as our drinking water, and microplastic appear to be inside. Oh, wow. Um, now, someone made a note here that um, zip ties are very bad and um, the the drink rings are really bad. Um, Elf would like to know, how does the plastic get to the ocean? It may be if I'm here in Ontario, I don't have an ocean close to me, but mm -hmm. how can my plastic get to the ocean? That's a very good question. So I can pull up an other chart for us to take a look at how those microplastic or plastic actually get into the ocean. Here we go. So 
Um, we all have drains and we all have um, water pipes in our our uh, in at our household. And um, because we have a lot of things that is made up of plastic, like clothes or even for um, our daily product, like body scrub or even washing body wash. And those tiny plastics actually follow the water, which uh, will enter the drains or the water pipes of your households. And they will follow the water current and then go to the wastewater treatment plant. Um, however, those wastewater treatment plants cannot filter any of the microplastics. So uh, after that, those waste, wastewater uh, being, being uh, purified, they will just discharge into the ocean or the river. And then those tiny plastics will follow the current and enter river and eventually to the ocean as well. So for my own experience, I have led um, a citizen science project with secondary school students, and they try to use GPS to track all those marine litter from a uh, household, from drains, from uh, our city. And they all found out that actually for all the plastics or marine litter, they are actually come from, house, uh, from communities as well as they are coming from drains. Yeah, those are great questions and great answers and, and see how everything is connected. Um, so I wanted to go back to a question up here. Um, oh, they're all moving so quickly. Um, how are often cigarette butts, Melly? Are cigarette butts dangerous? Do they have plastic in them? Um, for cigarette butts, they are actually, uh, I would say some of them will have plastic in it, but uh, what's so dangerous about them is that they will absorb water and they have a lot of chemicals inside the packaging. And what those, uh, the, the cigarette butt will actually absorb water and it will sink to the bottom of the sea. And those chemicals are actually water soluble. So for uh, the fish, they will just try to fit on those chemicals or try to intake those water, which might be toxic to the marine animals nearby. Yeah, um, and this question was, it anyway, I remember the question. I don't remember who asked it. How often do you find animals, um, the Vancouver Aquarium, how often do you find animals that are um, in danger or from um, plastic? Like, would you find a turtle with something around his fin or um, something around his neck? For Vancouver Aquarium and also our team here, we often receive or um, I would say like um, twice or twice a month in the, uh, and then they are being, uh, the sea lions are being spotted uh, by the citizens living around or near the coastal area that they see a lot of strength uh, entanglement of sea lions. So we often receive call and um, they're being wrapped by the plastics as well as some uh, rings uh, the packaging rain that used to uh, package all those uh, Coke or uh, soft drinks. And that's a very big question because they will, uh, they will uh, cause like um, suffocation of some kind of animals like sea turtles. Uh, so far we do not have any recordings from uh, citizens that we have entangled sea turtles, but mostly sea lions and seals. And can fish see the plastic? Like, why do they ingest? Why are they eating the plastic? So for fish, uh, uh, for plastics, they are something that is man-made. They are not natural. So for fish, they do not have the instinct thought of um, these kind of products would be man-made. And all of, uh, they would say that, oh, actually those are food. So they mistake those plastic as food uh, because they do not, really recognize um, or classify those plastics as man-made or natural ones. So uh, for fish, even though they have good eyesight or even though they have a very good adaptation, good sense of uh, sensing around uh, their environment, but uh, plastic is something that they cannot avoid and they use gills in order to breathe. So uh, when they intake all those water into their body, accidentally intake a lot of plastics. 
And even a plastic bag looks a little bit like those jellyfish that are floating around. So a, a jellyfish predator might mistake it for a plastic bag. Yeah. So um, one question that Ella, Eloise had or Elodie had was, what can we do as citizens to stop people from using plastic? So maybe you can go on to the next part of your presentation. For sure. So this is the important part that I want all of us to really think about it because uh, we have plastic starting from our life. We produce a lot of plastics. We discharge a lot of microplastics into our oceans. So it's our responsibility to really think of ways in order to reduce your plastics. So I got my own uh, uh, reusable stuff that here I can share with you all. So I have a lot of things uh, in my bag every day to avoid using single-use plastics. So let me show all of you. So for, um, for the first one, I have my foldable cup. So it's a foldable cup that you can extend it and add water in it. And you can bring it everywhere, it's portable. So would be a very nice one for you uh, alongside with water bottle as well. And I love drinking uh, coffee, especially cold ones. So uh, for myself, apart from uh, getting my own reusable cup, I have my reusable bamboo uh, straw as well. So I try to use them every day and all I need is to wash them every day to keep it clean. And by doing so, you can reduce the use of any reusable, uh, uh, any single use straw. So this is one of my favorite for uh, my sustainable lifestyle. And of course I have my chopstick and fork as well. So this is my fork and spoon in one go. So it's very user friendly. If I need to use it, wash it again. And uh, I do have my, put packaging with me. This is made from one of our colleagues. And I usually put my fruit and I try to put um, chocolate biscuit in it so that I try, I, I won't use a lot of single use packaging too. So this is one of my go-to if I need to buy bread or even bakery from stores. Last but not least, I have tried something really, really interesting and I, I challenge you to do that at home too. So what I did is actually, I tried to find some old cloth, clothes for, for me, like a t-shirt, and I made it into a bag. So what I did is I tried to cut away the sleeves as well as the collar of my t-shirt. And then I use my, uh, and then my, I used my scissor to cut the end of the t-shirt into stripes. And then I try to make knots and it become a bag eventually. So you can see the knots here and it's quite secure. And what I do with this is when I do grocery shopping, I will bring it with me and I will put all my veggies, uh, my cheese and even bread inside or even I can put all my stuff, like my reusable cup to this bag as well, as well as my bamboo straw, as well as my, uh, my utensils, and as well as my uh, go-to bag. So all of them actually inside my reusable bag here. So I really want you to try later on to find one piece of t-shirt that you are no longer in use and try to do your um, your little reusable bag for your own. So uh, it will be a very fun project for us. But of course, uh, we have to know more about the plastic problem uh, apart from doing uh, some sustainable actions in our daily life. So try to really look for information. We have a lot of scientists doing a lot of great work. So make sure you try to learn more about them and try to do some scientific research together with scientists. So nowadays, uh, citizens, scientists are very popular where 
we all can actually participate in the scientific research uh, initiated by citizen science uh, um, for uh, initiated by citizens uh, as well as scientists. So do check it out and then try to learn more about um, plastic problem online, especially on our YouTube channel, because we have a lot of DIY sections that you can try to make up like a soap or even uh, bags as well as bee wax wrap as well. So try do try to uh, take a look at the videos and try to make your own sustainable items for, to replace those plastics. So thank you so much, Nicole, for that great message. And um, if you are talking about Minecraft or um, Fortnite, we really appreciate that you not do that or we'll remove you from the class. We're almost done, um, but we want to encourage all of the students to go to OceanWise and take a look at the information that they have there. There's lots of projects um, that you can join and information crafts and art activities that you can do to investigate um, uh, ocean plastics and, and the oh, it's called the plastic plague. Um, so thank you, Nicole, for two fantastic sessions that was just great um i'm also going to put in the chat um connectednorth.org um at home for the sessions that will be coming up in the next couple of days and we'd love to see you join them we have some on sharks and some about bees and butterflies with canadian wildlife and um, we, I think you have one with working at the oceans on Friday, right, Nicole? Uh, I have a note for that. So a bit of a spoiler. So I have invited uh, and other scientists with me to be on that session. So uh, he will be talking about marine mammals uh, and his work at uh, University of British Columbia. So do check it out and I will see you on Friday. <laughs> great Nicole have a great day and hopefully we'll see some of you in our shark session tomorrow at connected north at home and we will see if you for astronauts and what's inside you and pollinators all of this science learning has been so amazing and thanks for coming Gabriella and Louise and Jameson and Karis and uh, Kerrigan and Celine and the Fuhr family and Elodie, it was great to see you. And Wyatt and Chris, thank you so much. Okay, see you guys. Yeah.